<laughs> a warm welcome to all engineers and makers and electronic fans out there. We are back from Aachen studio with another installment of Lab Talk, and this is Matthias Clausen from the Electro Lab. With me is Jens Nickel, our editor in chief. Hello, and the topic of the day, Matthias, will be home automation. We can see it right there on the on the first sheet of uh, presentation. Yeah, and saving energy. You can do it right, mm -hmm. then you can save energy, but you have to keep in mind with the home automation, you have to spend energy to save energy. Mm -hmm. And this is something we will look today into mm -hmm. and give a few may think about mm -hmm. what you can do and what you can't do. And if you're wondering why we are still struggling with the setup, um, we have fully disassembled the setup, moved mm -hmm. it to another location, and we will also, after this day, fully disassemble it, put it in a box and send it over to Munich. So it will be at our booth at the Electronica show. That's interesting, yes. So we will use that setup. We will have a few live streams going on. Uh, more later at the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So let's go through our main topic. Saving energy with home automation. Normally home automation means more control about your heating, more control about your lighting. So yes. for example, you can switch off your heating if nobody's there. Um, also the lighting, but okay, there are hiccups. Yes, so mm. let's see what we have. First, we look at the hardware side. Um, yeah, saving power by smart lightning. I mean, for most of us, it's like obvious, why not? Mm. Uh, let, let some automation control do turning off our lights, uh, turning on at the right moment. Mm -hmm. If it's getting brighter outside, switch off the light. If it's getting darker, mm -hmm. turn on the lights where needed. Um, also interesting is in-house power measurement. So um, the other thing about saving energy is you need to know where you consume it and when you consume it. Mm -hmm. um, also scheduled heating is something that's really interesting. For example, today we had, as you said um, earlier, where the audio was broken, mm -hmm. uh, up to 25 degrees. Mm -hmm. It was like really, really warm. It's mm -hmm. like a nice summer day sort mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. And at that point you can turn off the heat you can also then, if you have automated um, external um, blinds, oh, they are called different, it's not a blinds. Uh, yeah, but I think mm -hmm. they, they will get what I mean. Um, you can open that to get the sunlight in the house to heat it up. Yes. And at the evening to close those to don't let the heat out if mm -hmm. not needed. Um, presence detection is also interesting. Mm -hmm. um, that's more for your home, you should know when you are there usually. Mm. Um, but that's something that's interesting for offices and, and shared, yes. also shared, shared office space. If in a shared office space, nobody is in there, mm. why should I turn on the heating or why should I turn on the uh, light? Mm. And I can also can check, hey, does something consume power when nobody's in the mm. house? Mm -hmm. So did, did somebody left something running? And but if you said, or, or if nobody is there, uh, for example, in the, in the summer, you have the opposite direction. You can close the blinds yeah. when the sun is shining and, and save, of, of course, uh, energy for cooling yeah. when the people come back. Um, yeah. So normally we would think that um, home automation always saves energy. Yeah, but let's, let's have a first look. So the best thing to save energy is to use a non-smart light switch. That's mm -hmm. consuming no energy. Mm -hmm. But the smartness relies on the user. And most of us, all of us, know if I leave the room, turn off the light. If I enter the room, turn it on, depending on the light source. Mm -hmm. Asterisk at that point. Mm -hmm. um, these um, fluorescent light bulbs um, up here also in the office stopping and starting them takes amount of energy so then it gets interesting but that's a side note if you then think hey let's put in every possible spot a smart light bulb mm -hmm. like you can turn it on you can turn it off you can control the brightness level um, talks and then it comes it talks with a wireless protocol and that means there's some kind of mcu inside some kind of radio module and usually every smart bulb that you put in your installation will consume approximately half a watt permanent. Okay. And if you multiply that in, in larger buildings, you suddenly get interesting amounts of standby current flowing. I see. So 
Also, if you use the uh, smart plugs, we had an article about that. And if you look inside, there is also an MCU, usually an ESP or something similar. And that also consumes a watt, half a watt standby current without being operated. And that adds up. So every mm -hmm. smart device you have at home that is intended to, to make life more easy mm -hmm. um, can contribute to energy saving. Mm -hmm. If you, for example, have an, an outside light mm -hmm. where you in the morning will leave the house while it's still dark and then there's nobody shutting that down for the next 10 hours. That's I have a first question, maybe it's a dumb question, but um, half a watt, that sounds very uh, uh, a, a very large amount to me. Can't we use these uh, super low energy microcontrollers which go to sleep mode and then wake up when, when the user switches something? Because they get better and better. When we are on the Electronica show, we will again see the new record breaking uh, low power a microcontroller. Why it is so high? Um, if you transmit radio data, mm -hmm. that's the point where the module takes a lot of energy. And mm -hmm. also if you need to listen for incoming packages, mm -hmm. that means you need to wake up and consume a, a certain amount of energy. And then you also, you're running on mains. That mm -hmm. means you need some kind of step down converter. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's also not running at 100% efficiency. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we have half a watt. If you calculate that at five volt VCC, um, that means um, we have 50, 100, uh, one watt to, to, yeah. So you have these these uh, currents in a, in a range of, of 50 to 100 milliamps running in, in the circuits at 3.3 volt or five volt, depending on what that's, there's inside. That's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, worst case, mm. and every time the module needs to wake up, mm. join its network, send data, hey, I'm alive, uh, mm. do you have something for me? Or mm. even starting listening for incoming data package, you have a current peak also in that um, ramping up. And this is why you have these, these standby currents also with the MCUs. If, if you put an ESP8266 inside, um, mm. if you don't do energy uh, low power optimization in those thingies, you get quite close to half a watt. Okay. How common are these energy harvesting uh, switches and so on, which are really not powered by mains? I mean, an ocean or Z-Wave mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. um, I think here in Europe, Z-Wave is not that... It, it's there, yes, but mm -hmm. most most home users say, hey, I have a Wi-Fi router running 24-7, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so let's put it on Wi-Fi, or I have an, an, an smart home assistant that does... Uh, Bluetooth or, mm -hmm. or an, an um, what was the other thing? It's not Thread. It's not currently called Thread. Zigbee. Um, the the Hue protocol. Mm -hmm. Everything that's, that's Philips Hue. Mm -hmm. um, in in that area, mm -hmm. yes, um, that's what most then use to connect all the stuff. And we are still some kind of, yeah power consumption in mm -hmm. there. We are getting better okay. over time, but still these, these, if you want to have a light on, you will have it on now not in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing. And what you can do, if we have uh, larger light arrays, like an office, you mm -hmm. can use one of these um, yeah, smart switches or smart relays in mm -hmm. the wall installment mm -hmm. um, to get power down. And or to, to use less less power for multiple light sources mm -hmm. once. So, and this is also what becomes quite interesting. If you have, for example, um, lights that are outside, um, high current bonds, mm -hmm. um, or if you have multiple lights like in, in a hallway, um, using these um, smart ones like the Shelly or something else um, to even just turn off the light, mm -hmm. presence detection is if nobody is there, then it could be quite uh, interesting to uh, use that because, mm -hmm. for example, if you have in a, in a hallway um, 60, 30 watt lights that you can uh, power down one hour before, uh, somebody else would do that. The amount that you spend to save the energy and the energy saved mm -hmm. is in a positive balance. Mm -hmm. So that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of interesting things, mm -hmm. you know we have a giveaway for this show. Uh, yes. <laughs> so before we forget that, yes. um, there should be a button on the board. 
If but that's set up correctly. Whoops, there's the giveaway. Yes, we give away one Groove Starter Kit pl uh, Plus and one Arduino Uno. Um, you have to go to the usual um, website. Link will be in the chat. Electro team, um, you are. Yeah, you can see the page, I mm -hmm. think. Yep, Electro team, uh, please put the link in the chat. Yes, giveaway time. Mm -hmm. And you need a code word for that. Mm -hmm. And this will also be shown in the chat. And we had a giveaway last show, and we have winners for that. Ta da! So, winner of the circuit simulation with. Now you can read it because it's hard to pronounce, I think. <laughs> um, yes. So, uh, Andrew Traham, sorry, that last one. Ari de Munit saw that name in the chat. So, mm -hmm. congratulations, mm -hmm. Gofni de Joshua and Malcolm Swart. Congratulations for that one. And I think I've, Malcolm has won something in the past. I'm not sure what that was. Um, if that's from the Raspberry Pi Pico W giveaway, if somebody hasn't received his Pico, W, mm -hmm. um, please get in touch with our marketing or logistics people. Um, there have been rumors that some parcels did not arrive at destination. So, okay, that shouldn't be. Yep, so please uh, give us a sign that something's wrong so we can hopefully sort that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, with that said, um, yeah, the small starter kit, you have a set of sensors, you have an, an uh, UNO, so you can play a little bit around. Hopefully you enjoy that one. And let's come back to the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, slides, HDMI, and HDMI picture and picture mm -hmm. if you like to. So, done right, even with the standby current they, they draw, you can save energy. So, if you turn off a uh, 100 watts of lightning installation just one hour a day earlier than you would use uh, do usually, or even with smart sensing, if the light is already bright enough, then you can definitely save on energy. Combine it with a presence detection and it gets really interesting. So those are the, the usual options you have. And the other thing is measuring um, energy and you can misuse these smart plugs, or some of them as a smart meter. They give okay. a rough idea of what, okay. what current you draw. And with that, you can also do some other interesting stunts we are not talking about. You have seen the, the balcony power plant and smart home automation thingy. I crossed that out for reasons. Balcony power plants and, and their operational status. We have Thomas did an article on that mm -hmm. one. It's, mm -hmm. it's still a topic that's quite interesting mm -hmm. but there are a lot of things and a lot of stuff legal stuff uh, that needs to be sorted and figured out to do that right in, in, in an appropriate way but you can use those as an energy meter and for example you can uh, see uh, if, if your washing machine is, is done uh, you can see if a light source that you have connected to it is still running and switch that smartly on and off if somebody has connected something and nobody's in the home and turned it off, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And you can also just install uh, really energy meters that report over Wi-Fi the current usage of the consumption or the, the, the whole building. So you can see, okay, nobody's at home, all light should be off. I'm still consuming 200 watts. What's wrong? Is it the fridge? Is it something else? I, I don't know. And um, yeah, this is quite interesting. But all those devices still consume a little bit of energy especially those uh, reporting ones. And the reporting ones, if you do, for example, balcony power plants, and if you know you are producing more energy with a power plant than you need it, you could, and that's just an idea, turn something on that will use the energy. For example, dryer, okay. washing machine, dishwasher, if okay. there's an overhead. Okay. Just an mm -hmm. idea, but I'm, I'm not a legal expert. I'm not sure if that's so. Uh, 
I just see that it, there should be some smart plugs out there that are very accurate and should be able to, what it is, get roughly down to one watt accuracy. So quite interesting. Yeah. And yeah, I see from the votes we have, the, the most of us uh, use smart heating to save energy already. So that's quite nice. And yeah, also with the energy meter, um, for example, if you have some kinds of pumps running that shouldn't, or you can start some kinds of pumps if you have an, an excess of energy from your um, power, in, uh, power harvesting installation. So that's, that's quite interesting to use. And the smart heating, <clears throat> that's also something I, th I think we should look into later on a bit more in detail. Um, most of these thermostats are able to uh, report the actual temperature in the room, yes. get a set value for the room for the time period to be uh, able to be programmed offline, so not in a not smart sense. And you can also have them in a kind of smart sense that you can send them from time to time new schedules. For example, if you see okay. somebody is now back at home, school out earlier or home office, then uh, you can change the temperature profile. Or if you have to leave the house because something happens, um, the system can then shut down the heating. Okay. That might be interesting winter. Or mm -hmm. if for whatever reason the sun is shining and you have warm temperatures, you can also adjust that. Like, okay, it's really warm. I don't need 21 degrees. It feels like hmm, 25, 26. Turn down the heat a little bit. So it can be a really nice way to do that. And also if you have forgotten to, to turn down the heating because you were cold, had a cold over freezing, uh, this can help. So there's no glowing radiator somewhere around. So that's a really nice one. But all those thingies have a small microcontroller in it. Those two run on rechargeable batteries. So if you re recharge them, usually they should run approximately one or two years without being recharged. Okay. So the interesting question for those is, are they able to run without an external cloud? Can you do all your home automation in-house? Because if the cloud is not there, you still want to have the control over your heating. Yeah, of course. And yeah, I think that's, that's something to keep in mind. So if you have something like a smart plug and, or a an, an smart summer start or smart light bulbs, make sure that they are able to run without any cloud connectivity. You never know when the cloud will be gone. And also it means if somebody enters the cloud, he could do interesting or not funny things with all the things he can reach. So giving, for example, bad command, uh, commands to the heating systems, turning them on or turning them off. Not so nice. Yeah, and with the right tools, you can optimize also the heat losses, like that uh, the exterior shutter or blinds or whatever you have, you can maybe electronically control, um, can be a nice way to put everything together. But as said, still you need to spend a little bit of energy to save energy. Mm -hmm. That's the ideally thing. And what's interesting, in, in two ways. First, uh, of, of its use, um, the presence detection. The easiest way of presence detection, there are systems like Home Assistant that can tap into your router and see if some or certain Wi-Fi devices are in the network and then assume that you are at home. Uh, there are also companion apps for mobiles to tell that you are in the area or that you are at home. And there's also the ES, ES Presence project. ES Presence use also the Home Assistance application. So you have an ESP somewhere in the network yes. that listens to uh, on, on uh, Bluetooth devices. And you can use a Bluetooth beacon app that you put on your mobile or if, or it is able at least to, to see if somebody is there by checking the beacons, the COVID or um, yeah, the, the COVID exposure apps transmits. So if you have oh, a COVID okay. transposure app on your phone, okay. You have the anonymized random generated numbers that it will uh -huh. spit out from time to time. Okay. And this is then able to see not who is there, but if mm -hmm. there is somebody there. I see. And can then, 
and that yes. behavior react accordingly. Also, the ES presence supports peer radar, uh, radar sensors, temperature, ambient light, stuff like that to get capture presence detection. So it's, it's a nice feature to, if, if you are allowed to do that and if you want to do that. At least the peer could be interesting for shared office spaces to see if somebody is running around, but you don't see who is that, so it would be legal in terms of data collection. Yep. And you can also do the other way around. You can use an ESP32 as a Bluetooth beacon. So if you have the, the presence detection, use the ESP, it will be the Bluetooth beacon, will transmit the beacon data from time to time and say, hey, I'm there, mm -hmm. or somebody is there. Yes. Please react accordingly, like turning on the light, turn up the heating, uh, open the blinds if it's bright outside or close it if it's cold outside and dark. Um, so that's, that's kind of a nice thing to do if you want to and also can automate a few other things in your home network. But for everything like that, you also need something that runs that software. And this brings us to the far end of this little one. Um, a Raspberry Pi will do. So Raspberry How Pi- How much is the power consumption of a Raspberry Pi? Uh, is the, that application? Calculate 10 watts, okay. plus minus, depending mm -hmm. on model and, and, you, mm -hmm. and, and load on the system mm -hmm. and all the, on the plugins you have installed. Um, if you have something that runs 24-7 mm -hmm. and that can securely run a site, the Home Assistant or an, an automation uh, software, that might also be an option. Some NAS systems or some bigger routers are capable of doing that. So you just put it aside of what it's already doing. It mm -hmm. will increase the power consumption, but you don't have to feed a whole additional systems. Yes. You will only put a little bit more load on an already existing running one. Um, yeah, the, the net, if you have a network attached storage system, mm -hmm. most of them allow to install uh, additional software and mm -hmm. Home Assistant, Node-RED, uh, OpenHub, um, and so on are also an option. You have a system that you still need to feed if you need to run it 24-7 for whatever reason. Um, so it's an idea even made to use that one, depending on the mm -hmm. system and, and model. It could mm -hmm. be um, less than uh, just a Raspberry Pi on its own. So that's, yeah. And what you can do, um, can use as, in a, as a first step, not read as Universal Aut um, Automation Foundation. We have some articles on that. Um, I've just seen um, Home Assistance includes that already. So then go that route, use Home Assistance. If there's not read inside, you can program even more advanced things. And we also have good articles about Home Assistant we have even in Elector. We have even books about that. So Home Automation, there is a lot to discover. Mm -hmm. You can automate a lot. You can also may just say, if you don't want presence detection for your mm -hmm. home, um, use a chat client of your choice mm -hmm. and then send a message like coming home so mm -hmm. that it will prepare heating up um, the rooms, um, turning on the lights at a, at a given point, something like that. Or if you are not coming home at a certain point saying stay away and then the system will say, okay, go into energy safe, turn off the lights, turn down the heating, uh, stuff like that. So, but there's... Is, yeah. is wireless communication ruling the scene um, or are there still uh, there, there are also wired um, home automation systems? I, I know that there are, but... Uh, there are wired home automation mm. systems, but if you currently don't have a wired one, mm. Um, the easiest entry point is still something with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth-based technology mm -hmm. um, at that point. So, yeah, that's, yeah, or Zigbee uh, would be one of the other ones. Um, and what's interesting is currently you have these, this field of, of many uh, small or less smaller islands. Like you have the Zigbee yes. lighting, you have the... Uh, Wi-Fi controlled light bulbs, um, you have something that runs over Bluetooth. Um, there are currently steps to unify everything. That's the uh, matter. That's interesting. I think we will uh, visit these companies at the Electronica show. Yeah, there's, there's, there's Thread and Meta coming. 
not like the meta universe, but mm -hmm. uh, meta like it matters, um, that tries to unify all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you have then um, bridges that will connect your Zigbee lights, uh, your Wi Fi light bulbs, all that stuff into one single uniform application that you can have one big smart thingy network controlled from a central instance without having multiple bridges that do like Zigbee to MQTT, MQTT to whatever your Wi-Fi thing is, talk uh, to whatever other Bluetooth technologies uh, you currently have to control. And there are currently steps uh, done to get into that. It makes also the integration a lot easier. Um, yep. So as the slides are coming to its end, conclusion, if your automation has the option to save energy, go for it. Mm -hmm. If it uses more energy than it saves, the question is, what do I really need? Is it just for comfort? Or does it have already energy saving things in mind? And if it's only for comfort, is there a way to improve it? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to give up all your comfort if done right. Saving and comfort can go hand in hand if they need to, or if they, they can do it. And yeah, that's then on yourself to decide on what route you would like to go, what, what route you would like to walk. So that's, I think, the short walk through the home automation stuff. At that point, um, we have something else coming up for mm -hmm. the exhibition that's not in the fully energy saving state, but sort of. Uh, we are currently playing with some e-papers. Those things are really interesting if you just need to store information on a panel that runs without power. So yeah, now, yeah, now you can see it's really a display. And I can <clears throat> disconnect power mm -hmm. from it and mm -hmm. it keeps its information. Okay, So that's really cool. Yeah, there are companies that are selling those panels yeah. uh, and also fully solutions that mm -hmm. run on, on batteries and stuff like that. On a yeah, what, what do we have here? Maybe you this can is... say something about the boards. Yeah, so the problem is um, our microcontroller here is definitely not low energy. So that's a Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi Pico. Mm -hmm. Standard version, taking energy from a 5 volt USB plug. That means that the power losses are it will consume, or the, the pike will consume at least one to two milliamps. Mm -hmm. um, the display only consumes power if you want to refresh it. Mm -hmm. You have some losses in, in the watts, but that's not that much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, refreshing those takes energy. On the other hand, you only yeah, need energy while you're refreshing it. It keeps the information without being powered. Can be re really, really nice. So yeah, it's also a technology you could use in certain applications. Mm -hmm. First, to don't print out every time a new sign. You see a lot of supermarkets are now doing that. They have or they have gone e-paper also for prices. Yes, yes. So they can easily change prices without reprinting all the price tags. If it's good or bad, let's... What, uh, what do we have here at the bottom? That's just the interface circuitry for the e-paper display. Mm -hmm. Some uh, driver circuitry, some mm -hmm. DC converter for the high voltage of the display. How much is it? <sighs> e-paper displays are were not pricey, uh, were not well, were, were not cheap in the time before the part shortage, and they have not mm -hmm. become any kind of approximately for, for this interface and uh, display in that size? For, I think somewhere around 45 plus minus. I'm okay. not 100% sure, mm -hmm. uh, excluding the Pico. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it becomes really interesting if you use a wireless Pico on this one and have found a way to use that on a low power somehow way. But yeah, it's quite nice that it's keeping the information. Mm -hmm. uh, the update rate of the display is not that fast. Mm -hmm. So it takes some time to update it. You have to update it from time to time. There are a few things about it. Um, but still, Do yeah. we always need this sequence uh, black-white or is it programmed by you? No, that's uh, uh, programmed by the driver. The driver is okay. IC itself. Mm -hmm. So I think it's trying to remove the, the ink particles in, oh, the, right, I see. in the right I way. See. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
and so it's not meant to refresh it uh, each um, two or three seconds. No, well, it's it's yeah. it's meant to be refreshed uh, refreshed once in a while. Okay. At that point. Okay. But um, yeah, uh, it's it's quite nice if you mm. want to advertise something like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it doesn't yeah consume energy while it's not being updated. Um, it's like the, the Kindle reader. They use the same technology and we have now gone um, seven colors, the ECAP ones. Okay. And we have now displays that can go full color-ish. So. Okay. And how many dots per inch do I have here? Uh, oh, I need to calculate that. I don't mm. have that in mind. It's currently a 648 by 480 on a 5.83 inch display. Okay. So. It's, it's really sharp. Yeah, it's, but but there. Yeah, but you can see that live on the on the Electronica. Okay. So we'll, that's mm -hmm. one of the exhibits we will take with us. So mm -hmm. some software on that one. And yeah, speaking of that, after we reinstalled the audio we talked about that the stuff is moving for the exhibition and we have some announcements so there is one live stream coming from the show that's the 17th of november five o'clock that should be central european time we are then in, in winter time so we are moving our that's, that's thursday evening so three days of the fair are then gun, so that yep. gives us the chance, Matthias, to really go out there and discover interesting things. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah, um, also, it's not a lab talk. We will have also an engineering insights. Same spot, same slot, same stage, same setup. We will combine two shows. Yeah, so one. it will be in, yeah. in <clears throat> engineering lab talk insights yeah. at that point with mm -hmm. our colleague Stuart. We have, um, we have the upcoming shows here. Mm -hmm. um, currently, there is the review of Bauma 2022. We are, it should come, if it comes, Friday-ish, I heard. So, sort of, not, not sure there are some delays in the schedule. Mm. But the next one will be the Engineering Insights from the Electronica. Yeah. Uh, will be on YouTube and Twitter. So. Mm -hmm. Even this show then will go to Twitter and there will also be a webinar coming up. So we have uh, how to identify and test components with Clarence and special guest on the 8th of December, 4 o'clock uh, on click meeting registration as usual. Yes, and that's the um, webinar belonging to the next edition of Elector. So that's November, December, and it's currently uh, be printed on the, the print machines are running. So, should so be. maybe in one week you will get the, this edition. Yep. 10 days. Yep. And after the show, we will have uh, also one week after the Electronica, we have one week or one and a half week later in Lab Talk, but we'll announce that on the show. And that will then deal with all the interesting things we saw and a topic we have still to determine. So that will be a surprise. Also as the giveaways for the upcoming shows. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. Um, we are running to the 40 minute mark. I think 30 minutes with audio on. And <laughs> yeah. And it, next time we will be in a, a new office. Uh, yeah, we will. If, if everything we, works well. We will move mm -hmm. this studio location to another office that's a little mm -hmm. bit spacier. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the installment we can leave permanent so that we don't have hiccups with audio. I mean, we almost got most of the audio stuff working. Uh, if I remember the, the first shows, it was interesting to say at least. Um, yeah. But there will be a new installment. I'm not sure when we are ready. I hope mid of January everything will be moved okay. to that location okay. and that the setup will be in a more or less uh, mm -hmm. better state where we can use that. So um, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the show even with its little or bigger hiccups concerning the audio. 
Um, enjoy the evening. Last final words. I just can agree to you sentence. <laughs> Then keep healthy, keep creative. Goodbye. Goodbye.